Hey YouTube friends and family, how's everybody doing? I hope you're doing fantastic. I know things have been a little rough. I know that what we're seeing in the news and the alternative news and and sometimes even in our own neighborhoods is not fun. It's not comfortable and it's really really bothering a lot of us. We don't have any answers. We all know what the problems are not necessarily where they come from or why but we know they exist sad thing is we don't know how to solve them or how to get rid of them you know focusing on what cannot be done or focusing on problems can wear our nerves thin it certainly can and in fact, we've had several video shares from people that want to know. And, you know, they want to know, like for instance, uh, OUTSI, O-U-Z-T-S-I-E-123, had a video on the 25th. How do we explain Boston? I commented to her video and uh, explained to her that I really enjoyed it. But she still had a question. She said, but seriously, how does one even talk about this without being laughed out of the room? Try for view, comment. She's right. You know, I've tried to talk to people about chemtrails. I've tried to talk to them about 9-11, about Sandy Hook, the Oklahoma bombings, the London bombings, and many, many other things. You know, earthquakes, like the one down in Mexico that uh, was advertised for two weeks. Even the magnitude, 7.9 at noon on this date. And lo and behold, 7.9 earthquake at, at, well, one minute past noon on the exact date. How could it have been advertised? Try to talk to people about these things and they roll their eyes. And they look at you and they say, you need to quit watching videos. You need to quit going on the computer. Man, you need to quit watching the news. You need, you know, they don't want to believe that it's true when all they have to do is look. It's a matter of opening the eyes and looking. It gets frustrating. And we don't have the answers. We don't have the whistleblowers. How odd is that? How odd is it that we can see the planes overhead? We see a beautiful blue sky turn into a white, a grayish white mass that blocks out our sun completely. Visually, everybody can see it, although few people look up. And we don't have the answer as to why they're doing this. Many speculate. There are ideas galore, and some of them very unnerving. Could it be that this toxic brew that they're pouring is to kill us? Who knows? Who really knows? Until someone comes forward with truth, absolute facts. We can all speculate. We can focus on it. We can dwell on it. We can chew on it. We can become very afraid, very lost, and feel very hopeless. It's just something that until we find a person willing to tell the truth, we're not going to have the answers that we're seeking. We certainly aren't. It breaks my heart. But I'm not alone. You know, there's other people whose hearts are being broken too. 
For instance, I watched a video put out by Mark C. 1234 Golf. That's M A R K C 1234 Golf. No crocodile tears here, Mr. Obama. Agenda 21 is real. It broke my heart to watch this video. She's crying her heart out. And many, many people are feeling the frustration, the hopelessness, the fear. I know in my home, we're not happy about it. These things are very disturbing. I mean, actors that come out and, and perform on a uh, crisis. <sighs> How hard is that to believe? None of us want to believe this. Do I want to believe that chemtrails are real? No, I don't want to believe it. But I can't lie to myself. They most certainly are real, very real. And it's time that we all look up and see that they are. No, there's nothing we can do about it. I've signed every petition that's ever come around. You know, there's many people that have tried, tried in vain to get something done. It surprises me that we see nothing, you know, in the bills that go into Congress and into the House and Senate. and We see nothing. What we do see are things that are very unnerving. We see things that just feed this uh, nastiness. This stuff that invokes fear, invokes terror invokes pain, sleeplessness. But we don't have the answers. I'm at the point, dear friends, where I don't want to focus on this stuff. My feeling is if there's nothing that we can do, me, I'm going to speak for myself, if there's nothing I can do about it, if I have no control and if people want to laugh at me for telling them about it or uh, put me down and make nasty remarks because I'm trying to explain what I see as true, then it's a waste of my precious energy. And energy is very valuable. It certainly is. When we moved here, into this house. Well, before we moved here, uh, mom and my stepdad lived in this house, and the backyard was just a mess, M E S S mess. The grass was dead for the most part, and dad worked full time, my stepfather. He worked full time, and mama, of course, was disabled. And uh, he tried. I'd come over from another town and mow for him and set water. And then I'd go back home. And we couldn't do that every day, of course, because of fuel prices and, and our own, my own life. But we would come over and it was sad to watch how this yard had just dried up. Fruit trees overgrown, ungroomed. The fruit that came off of them wormed and eaten up by birds and, and uh, horribly hard to get any amount of apples from the apple trees when all, they had been just destroyed by worms. But uh, when we moved in after he, he passed away, mother wouldn't let us make any changes. We would talk to her about it. Perhaps we should do this or we need to groom the trees and, and thin them out and get some sunlight into them. And, you know, we could, we could do this to get rid of the worms and we could do this. And we'd come up with all these ideas and she would just shut us off. She'd block us at the pass. 
And I couldn't understand, but I kept watching and listening. And then one day it hit me. If we were to change that backyard, it would perhaps affect her memories because the backyard was as it was the day that my stepdad passed away. And I thought maybe in some way that is her reasoning for not wanting to make a change. Well, we would go out and sit on the back porch and look around and it was so negative. It was just so bad. There was trash, dead grass, weeds, horrible. I can't even describe it. There was junk that had accumulated for years up against the fence line and underneath the deck and around in every corner. So we would spend our time looking up into the heavens. And at night it was beautiful. The stars, the shooting stars, the comets, the satellites, and sometimes other things that we couldn't explain, we would see in the sky. And it was a real positive feeling. As we looked up into the sky, we would sit and talk about our goals or our dreams, things that we wanted, the things that we wanted for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. We are great-grandparents now, by the way. We have one. So it was fun. It was a real positive thing for us to sit there and talk. And then I started thinking about a garden and how nice it would be to plant seeds and watch them grow. So I spoke to my mother about it. Wouldn't it be nice to have a garden, Mama? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, would you mind if we till up and put a garden in your backyard? No, I don't want to be bothered by any garden. Well, Mom, we'll do the work. No, I don't want any garden. Leave it as it is. Okay. And every other thing that I spoke to her about, I'd get the same response. That negative, she couldn't see what I could see. Like many people cannot see what we see in the sky or what we see in these uh, bombings and these disastrous things that are taking place. Even though it's right there in our face. Kind of like the uh, speech that somebody just gave for the uh, communications. Uh, oh, we won't go there. But it's right in your face. Even though it's set up in a comedy format, it's in our face. A lot of truth. Anyway, because I didn't want to try and force the issue, I thought about that garden and how when you plant a seed, it germinates. And once it germinates, you get a sprout. And from the sprout comes the plant. And I thought, maybe I should plant seeds with Mama. So one day, sitting at the table, I said to Mama, do you remember when we used to go out Grandpa's farm and we'd pick big red tomatoes? And you'd reach in your pocket, Mama, and pull out that salt shaker. And you and I'd sit there and eat those straight from the vine. She said, oh, I do remember that. I said we both had juice running down our chins. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. God, that was great, wasn't it, Mama? Yeah, it sure was. And I'd leave it. The seed was planted. Then one day I was talking to her and I said, Oh, Mama, do you remember when you used to tell me how you wanted an arbor? You wanted this nice arbor. And around the arbor, you wanted grapes. And you wanted a bench in there so you could just sit and read a book and pick grapes and eat. You remember that? Tell me about that, Mama. Oh, I do remember that, she'd say. I said, boy, that'd be neat, wouldn't it? You know, I can almost see one in your backyard. Yeah, yeah, she said. 
Well, three years went by. And then lo and behold, one day I was talking to her and I said, Boy, Mama, look at those weeds, those nasty dry weeds and those foxtails over against the fence line. It just covers your whole fence. Wouldn't it be nice if there were berries growing there? Blackberries, red berries, raspberries. Wouldn't it be awesome? If we could go out and just pick some and eat them. You remember when we used to go berry picking, Mama? Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And then we laughed about a time that my aunt and Mama and I had gone berry picking. And we threw a plank across the berries up there in Washington. They were thick, just thick berry bushes. We always carried planks of wood with us. You know, those 10 wide. We threw the plank and out went mama, out went auntie, out went me. And we're all picking berries. Well, something ran through the berry bush and boy, did it shake the berry bush. It just really rocked it. It spooked mom so bad that she went over the top of my aunt and shoved past me, threw me into the berry bush to get to the car. We laughed and laughed about that. Well, she gave us the authorization to do whatever we wanted in the backyard this last winter. Sitting there one day, just out of the blue, she said, you know, kids, I think it'd be nice to have an arbor and some berry bushes and Oh, I'd love to be able to pick apples and even if they're green with my salt shaker. I'd love that. I remember that from when I was a kid. I'd love to do that. So, today, my friends, on April 28th, the trees are all trimmed and groomed. The greenhouse is built. The back to Eden garden plot is set. The chips are laid. The roses have been trimmed. The berries have been planted. And life is looking up. In fact, life is looking so up. We now can feel a major, almost magic, energy change, not just in the yard, but in our home. It's made the most wonderful, positive energy. We're noting that we have a lot more birds, birds of every species, coming into the yard and eating from the bird feeders. Even the hummingbirds are starting to come into the yard. We have butterflies. Butterflies. I hadn't seen butterflies in a long time. Setting and watching them and bees. We're now getting more and more bees. Of course, we're allowing the dandelions to grow. And if I get a chance, I'll be planting milkweed. The monarch butterfly is going to be extinct if we don't. We don't spray for weeds. There will be no pesticides. We'll go natural. Absolutely natural. And the energy that's coming from Mother Earth is a great reward. The energy in our home. The energy from Mama. Life's looking up. So we'll keep looking up. We will pay attention. But we're not going to focus on it. We have greater things to do. We certainly do in connecting with Mother Earth and that pos positive energy and sharing with all of you. Does it get any better than that? 
Plant some seeds, my friends. Oh, and I did plant real seeds. Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Savage. They broke ground. They sprouted. And now they're little plants ready to go out in the greenhouse and out into the garden. I'll have to do a video on this to show you the major change. I think you'll enjoy it. Friends, let's plant seeds. Seeds for each other. If somebody disagrees with you and thinks you're crazy for saying that chemtrails are real, or that many of the things that we're seeing consist of actors and badly written scripts, such as the Boston event, a marathon bombing, the Sandy Hook, and so many more. You know, in 9-11, how many architects and engineers does it take to show you people that it absolutely did not happen as we were told? So if people argue and they disagree and they tell you that you're crazy or you're just paranoid or that's a conspiracy theory, just know that you planted a seed. Don't argue with them. Don't fight and don't shed the tears. Just look at them and smile and say, well, keep looking up. Keep looking up. Or someday the truth will prevail because that's how it works. The truth does prevail. I love you all. Great big hugs. Plant some seeds. Did you plant those fruit trees? You need to. Mother Earth will reward you. Believe me, she does. The energy that comes from her goes into your spirit, into your home. You'll hear more laughter, more, more wonderment. You certainly will. Catch you guys later.